Hey folks, 15 years today. So, got something special. 15 years of using Linux and the majority of that time using Linux as my daily driver. So, what happens after 15 years of living, breathing, and tweaking Linux? Well, let me tell you, it just kind of changes how you think about computers. So, let's dive in. Now, I haven't really told too many people about how I got into Linux. And people are genuinely surprised when I tell them that Gen 2 Linux was the first distro that I fired up. And they're like, how? So anyway, let's get into it. I'll tell you all about it. Now, if you haven't subscribed, like, what are you waiting for? Let's just take a walk down memory lane, shall we? Back in 2009, I was using an iMac G5, nearly new, or at least it had all the specs I was looking for. And then Apple pulled one of their classic moves where it switched Intel processors and bam, my machine was obsolete, like for real. You know how like normally get like several, you know, upgrades when you get a Mac or you at least used to, right? You could, you know, upgrade the operating system. Well, I got half an upgrade. It came originally with Tiger and I could get a limited version of Leopard that barely ran anything. Well, I kind of felt like I got swindled, if I'm being perfectly honest. That's when I started thinking, there's just got to be something better, right? At first, I tried Debian and then Mint, and because they had the images I would get past the bootloader, except they were bad images, and then I came across Gentoo that would get past the bootloader, and that was a good image. And after three weeks of wrangling, I finally had a functioning system. That moment. It felt like I'd cracked the code. I couldn't believe it. You know, you know, you know what a feat it is for a noob to install Gen 2 Linux, especially back then. Like today, there are literally oodles of documentation compared to back then, right? Could you imagine what a relief I felt when I realized it wasn't going to be one of those $500 oversized paperweights that I had on my kitchen table all right fast forward to 2010 i then i had a laptop laying around so i gave ubuntu a try and boy did i love it gnome 2 kde 3.5 those were golden in those days heck i even messed around with confis making my windows explode and wobble all over the screen fancy stuff right well then came gnome 3 and kde 4 and suddenly everything i loved was gone Frustrated, I just went crawling back to Windows and I figured there was something that was too good to be true and thus short lived. Well, let me tell you, Windows 8 was its own special kind of nightmare, if I'm being honest. Actually, I think it was one of the cooler desktop environments a Windows ever put out. I know I'm a little weird when I say that, but the Metro makes a lot of sense to me, even if I largely use a tiny window manager. Like in Linux, we use EWW, right? You could spawn a Metro-like environment, maybe I'm kind of thinking, right? Some of the features or some of the things that I saw on the Metro could be in the EWW spin, right? And that's a recurring thought that I've had. Not that I will ever do anything with it, but anyway, moving on. By 2014, I was really getting serious about efficiency and starting installing tiling window managers like bspwm and i3 and i also switched to neovim at that time and i still hated dealing with vim script but as much as i hated configuring vim neovim kind of felt like a logical upgrade i still don't know why so ubuntu was working on unity 8 and mirror when they suddenly decided to ditch the project it wasn't so much that they ditched it they strung a lot of people along for years, for three years, and everybody was looking forward to using it. And then, without much of a notice, Ubuntu just pulled the plug. They went with the GNOME desktop. And I think most people know at this point what I think about the GNOME desktop. I had one computer with Ubuntu installed on it at that time, and after that, I uninstalled it, and I haven't used it since. Here, I want to recognize I think Ubuntu probably had to make a difficult decision, but why do you string people along for years only to pull the plug? And you do it suddenly. And then a few months ago, an LTS version of Ubuntu came out, 
and virtually like no one made a video about it no one blogged about it i remember the days when everybody went nuts whenever a release was out by ubuntu or one of its flavors now it's just kind of lost into obscurity now fast forward today linux has been my daily driver for 15 years i picked up so much along the way who was scripting in neovim using version control setting up proxmox servers patching code it's all kind of second nature and sure there have been bumps in the road there are always interesting challenges whether you're talking about setting up language servers or linters or auto completion in neovim even now mason and lazy has made everything kind of a breeze right but programming my first program or compiling my first package or setting up a cron job and don't get me started on ai because it's revolutionized how i script these days chat gpt and other ai tools have given me just so many ideas right after nearly a decade with arch i made the switch to fedora why well i personally got tired of my packages breaking when i wouldn't do an update for more than two weeks the whole aur just basically exploded in popularity and the result was that you had a lot of maintainers who just maintained packages that would break if you didn't practically do daily updates one day i just had that moment of clarity when i stepped back and i realized that i had left manjaro a number of years ago for a lot less instability I do a lot of audio and video editing, and I need System D for all that multimedia work. Sure, I thought about going back to Gen 2 since it uses OpenRC, and I think I could probably get it to work if I tortured it enough. I thought about giving Nixos a try, and I'm still kind of thinking about doing that. For right now, though, Fedora fits the bill. Who knows where I'll end up next? Maybe Slackware? Maybe something else? It's all kind of part of the journey, right? When I first started using Linux, we we're still using 32 bit systems. And so we really were very conscious about conserving resources, right? If you had a 64 bit processor, you were able to conserve on those resources. And then you kind of had a, like a special system, right? Even though those days are largely over, there are still a lot of special things about the whole Linux ecosystem that the average browser runs a lot more resources than before because websites have so much more garbage on them than before. One thing is sure though, Linux is still as exciting as it was when I first started. I've got an Arch Linux tattoo to prove it. Computers have come a long way since I was eight years old and my dad brought home the Apple IIc to personally seeing email for the first time, 90 or 91. Maybe it was a laptop that a friend installed Unix on so that I could surf the net on that like horrible browser or hearing about Wi-Fi eight years before it actually became mainstream. As I look ahead, I'm more excited and terrified than ever to see what the next 15 years will bring. There's one thing that 15 years of Linux has taught me. It's that you're really never done learning, right? Whether you're customizing your desktop, figuring out containers, patching code, there's always something new on the horizon and after all of these years i'm still just as passionate about it as when i first booted that gen 2 system all those years ago